me joy slash fairy liquid from the magical land of Jingjiang Jujong and um, welcome to my kitchen where I might sound a little bit echoey I really must get round to putting some <laughs> some pictures up I've been here forever anyway um I am sitting here today because some people have asked what do you keep in your balloon bag and so I have got my balloon bag here for you right now dun 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 <laughs> there it is in all its glory. Actually, do you know this is a designer bag? This is um, a Jaeger and I got it for the princely sum of one pound from the local second-hand market. <laughs> so it just goes to show that you don't need to spend loads of money on stuff. However, if you are thinking of setting up ballooning as, um, you know, as a little side hustle or part of what you do, you may want to invest in one of those balloon busking bags, you know, the type that sort of strap round like a, like a workman's belt, except they're particularly for balloons. And you would do well to get one of those because you will have your hands free. You will also be able to put your colours separately and, you know, having a space for, um, you know, a little holster for your balloon pump, which is very handy. And, um, and I do recommend you have some sort of hands free thing like that if you're doing walk around. Now, I don't really do walk around. Um, I'm usually like based at a table because I do other entertainment as well. I could do, um, uh, you know, music and games and, and all of that sort of thing and magic. So, so I'm usually based at a table. So therefore, I'm, in the 10 years I've been doing this, I've never actually used a different bag. This is my, my faithful. <laughs> and I'll show you what, I'll show you what I've got inside and how I've organized myself because it there's some tips there that will help you too if you're starting up and don't yet have one of those buskers bags which you can get from Tinternet and all good suppliers they're usually like bespoke like handmade or whatever so they're, they're not cheap and that's probably the main reason why I haven't bought one and also as well like I say you know I'm often jumping about doing party stuff and it's all going to come out <laughs> we don't want that right so I'll show you what we've got inside without further ado and um uh, so this is how I literally turn up except I will also have my phone shoved in the top and um keys now this is just a side thing right if you don't have any pockets in your clothes and I don't have pockets in any uh, my like costumes or whatever that I wear um so you or a good um rule is to always put your keys in exactly the same place now um if uh I normally put them at the back of my stereo that I use for parties and I always just slip my keys just behind there because I know that's where they are um but if I didn't do that, for example, if I was just doing ballooning somewhere and um, so did not have my stereo with me, I would put them and there's a little pocket in here and I would put them in there because there's nothing worse than like, you know, fumbling about if it's raining or something, you're fumbling about trying to get your keys. Anyway, right, so let's have a little look inside. So in my, um, this particular bag, it has got two main pockets. It's got one little zippy pocket, which I'll show you in a minute when it's a bit more empty in the middle. And there's also a little tiny zipped pocket as well, which uh, we'll talk about in a second. And they all have their good function because it's really important to keep quite organised. So in the middle pocket, well, I've, I've, that's where I've got my balloon pump there, my hand pump. I also use a foot pump and you can see that one in that video up there. If you just click up there on the eye and that will take you to my balloon pump uh, little video there. And um, and so let's have a look. So on this side, now this is my what I would call my go-to balloons. Okay, so at the moment these are just happen to be the ones that I'm using. Um, uh, I use Qualitex and Sempertex. They are six of one and half a dozen of the other. Is in terms of quality, and uh, I like I quite like um, Qualitex because they're just really stretchy and really easy to blow up. These ones. They're, they're tougher to blow up, but I don't know, that could possibly be because these are satin ones and so they're just a different mix. Um, but I have actually developed some quite good biceps <laughs> lately, blowing these up and um, and back strain too. <laughs> right, so, so this is my go-to one. So say like I don't really need to think about the colour balloons I'm doing. Say like I'm just doing like, I don't know, just like a bunch of swords or something like that. Something really quick. Kids aren't really bothered about what colour you, you got. I quite like, uh, you know, just having a mix in there. I can just pull one out at random. Girls actually really like all the colours in this in, in the satin range because they're all quite pretty. Boys, mm, on generally boys, uh, of course I'm speaking in general terms, might not appreciate the pink and the purple so much, but sometimes, you know, if you don't give them a choice, they're not actually that bothered. So that's just the bag I think I can just quickly pull stuff out of 
make some balloons. I know there's some nice colours in there. It's, it's easy for me to pick out the colour I want from a mixed bag as it is having them all separated out. I did used to have all the colours separated out and it has its place, um, but not being um, a standalone balloonist, it wasn't really that necessary for me to do. And then the, it, it requires, of course, a lot more preparation in making sure you've got all your colours in the right place, you've got enough of them and things like that. So this works better for me, might, might have something different for you. So let's see what other balloons I've got in this same one. It's a bit lower down because I don't use these ones as much. And they're not my go-to balloons. I have got a bag of bags, okay? Let's have a look. It's actually a bag of three smaller bags of, these are my 160s. So all my 160s are in this one big bag here. So I've got some, the satin assortment there, which, oh, oh, oh pearl, is it pearl? I, I can't remember, of 160s. And, and I've got um, some other colours here, which are great for like character balloons and that. Um, so I've got blush in there, so I can like make mini princesses and uh, things like that. And I've also got a, for, in my 160s, I've got this is a Qualitex assortment there of, of 160s, which are sort of more like, a, it was a traditional assortment colours. So like, I can make pretty much anything. With all this variety of colours, I can make anything. Okay, but I want to keep my 160s separate, so that's why they're in there. And also, because I don't do 160s as much, that's why they're in a separate bag. Well, that's the end. That's the end of that one, okay. Now, let's go to the other side. And on the other side, I have got a big bag of um, Qualitex balloons, Qualitex 260s. These are just all sort of random colours. Um, because they're not really my go-to balloons at the moment. Um, I've just got a whole massive different range of colours in there, which I've just mixed all together because they're ones I don't use as much at the moment. So I might just sort of, you know, I can just sort of fish around. If I'm looking for a 260 blush, I can see it easily. Um, and I've also got gold, it's a gold 160 because I use them quite a lot for unicorn horns when I make a big unicorn hat. Just click up there, you can see the unicorn hat that I make. And then the, the gold makes a nice, uh, 160 makes a nice horn for that one. So that's why that one's in there, okay? Then we have also got here another, oh hang on, there's something else in that one as well which I didn't tell you about. And I've got in here a pack of um, round balloons. I don't really use them very much, but you know what I mean when I say round balloons, don't you? You know, just your normal sort of party balloons. And something like that is great for like a dog's tongue. If you're making a little doggy, you have to upload a dog one sometime. And um, also, uh, if you just want to, you know, the kids are maybe like, oh, dare I say it, just running around a mock, and you um, want to, to, to uh, just give them something to do, you can just blow up a big round one, and, or a few, they can run about and play with the balloons at the same time. So that's what's in there. And then I've got another one of 260s and some other stuff. So these colours I've got in here, I've just separated them from the other bag of 260s because um, it's just, otherwise it's just too much all in one go. This, I've got some gold and silver in here. I've got, uh, I've got, I mean, these aren't 260s. These are some, some little round ones because we're coming up to Halloween. And so I've got these little fellas here. And these are quite good for a little game that you can use. And, um, and I, put, I, I blow them up and then, I say, uh, oh, we just play a game, catch the balloon. So I don't tie it. I just let it, I just point it away from me. It goes towards the kids and um, and they've got to catch it. And they love that. The only thing is, if you've got a very um, uh, boisterous set of children, you just want to be careful because they might ram into each other for that game. So, you know, play that one by ear. Oh, I just dropped. Oh, yes. I've just dropped. And this is this was inside this bag as well. And um, these were, this is actually, I won't bother showing you them now, but these are um, some balloons that I was using to make Olafs with. So there was an Olaf face, which was a printed balloon, which I ordered separately. And then there, it was um, an Olaf body. And that's actually like got, it's a special one there. It's got like two ends to it. So you can tie it at the top and the bottom. And it's got some brown ones, brown 260s for arms. Um, so those, that, so but I want to keep those separate. So those are little Olaf balloons. So I keep that in my little bag of, I don't know, silver, gold, and brown 260s. Because that's just helpful for me right now to have it like that. 
and I've got another bag inside here and this is my massive bag of scraps. Okay, probably don't need all these scraps. Some of these scraps are probably like 10 years old, who knows? Um, but uh, sometimes you know how it is. You might get um, a mutant balloon like this one and it just seems too good to throw away, you know, so you might want, uh, you can actually pull them apart, but they will have, probably will have holes in them. Um, so as a result, I don't want to put them in another bag because when I'm blowing that up, they're gonna pop. Um, or maybe I've been making a penguin balloon and I'm not a penguin yet, I have to do a penguin sometime. And I just want scraps of orange, which is always really helpful. You never need a whole orange one. I'll tell you what, I've got a lot of like little ones near the bottom and they are, um, they're great for unicorn horns, you know, just when you've got a little bit left, you know. So if you do the one balloon unicorn, clicking up there, um, and uh, maybe you run out of balloon for it, uh, just save a little bit of scrap and, and add a different colour horn on. Very nice, very nice indeed. Just make sure you wrap it round lots because, you know, those bits can, can come off and they can present a choking hazard. Of course, you want to be safe at all times. So, um, yeah, bag of scraps. And also, you know, you keep the bag of scraps out while you're ballooning because, you know, if one goes pop, you can just easily put it in there. Of course, I do also have an empty bag because there will be rubbish. So I've already put a little bit of rubbish in here already. There will be rubbish from, uh, you know, if your balloons pop or, you know, you snip a little bit off or whatever. So I always keep a bag in there that's just empty and then that's to use because otherwise you are forever like finding little bits of balloons at the bottom of your bag, it's horrible. Not very nice. We certainly don't want to be dropping them on the floor, do we? I do also have a pop-up balloon, a uh, pop-up balloon, a pop-up bin. Uh, which I use my parties and that's invaluable in terms of uh, what I'll do is I'll I'll put this inside the bin just looks a little bit more neater rather than lots of plastic bags everywhere okay so now you will not see me ballooning with all these bags out I'll try to keep the try to keep them as much as possible in my bag to look neat um or, or I just place them behind so that they can't be seen so I think that's all the bags of balloons we've got so let's see what else I keep inside here so I've got out all the balloons so I've got like um, the center pocket here. And like I said with the keys, it's really important to keep stuff where you can, you know where it is so that you don't have to be thinking, oh no, where's the scissors? I'll tell you what, if you put a pair of scissors in, in the wrong part of your bag, you'll be looking for them forever. And uh, of course, if you've got one of those lovely, you know, buskin aprons, then that's not so much of a problem. So inside the middle bit, I keep my scissors. I keep... Very, very important selfie stick. <laughs> um, and you do want to be thinking about, um, you know, marketing. You know, if you can take a picture of everywhere you go, even if you don't want to, you know, think what, what's this for? You'd be surprised how useful these things might come up later on in terms of marketing. Right, next, let's have a look and see. We've got a load of pens. Let me get all my pens out. And these are just the ones that I use. Um, you could keep them in a, you probably could keep them in a little uh, pencil case. Um, there's something extra to unzip. However, it would save you time in fiddling about in your bag looking for them. It's actually probably a good idea. I think I should probably get a tiny pencil case. Why didn't I think of that before? I've only been doing this 10 years. Anyway, so I've got a, a blue because uh, print, lots of prints are size of blue and that's what I use it mainly for. And pink for the lips. And I've got brown. It's a very light brown actually for like eyebrows and a, you know, a little bit for the nose. Um, or brown eyes if it's a brown eye. Um, uh, princess, although I could probably you know, mix it with a bit of black to get a darker brown for the eyes because otherwise it's too faint. And I've got green because uh, Rapunzel's eyes are green, I think. <laughs> um, and I've got a black Sharpie. doesn't have to be a Sharpie, but they do last a lot longer than the ones I've been getting from the pound shop. Um, and uh, that's for a little bit more, you know, detail, like the eyes and that kind of thing. However, I do also have um, a bigger permanent marker here. And that's good for like if you're doing spots on ladybirds. You can check out all these videos of these different um, balloons that I'm referring to, of course, um, in the playlist of ballooning tutorials by Fairy Liquid. Um, and I've also got a white one as well. I hardly ever used it, but I keep it in there to remind myself, use it, use it, Joy. Anyway, so there's my pens. 
That's all I've ever really, really needed. Oh, but there is also a biro in here as well. I'll get that out in a minute. Oh yeah, so we've got those things there. Let's see what else we've got in here. Yeah, biro, because you never know, like if somebody asks you to, um, I don't know, write something, or if you're writing a list of names of kids who it's their birth, yeah, you know, you're writing down like a, a list of who wants some balloons made, which I do sometimes. And what else we got? Oh, a fingerless glove. Now, I don't use this as much at the moment because I use my floor pump mostly. But if I'm using my hand pump for more than a couple of pumps, I, am, I really, really, really recommend you get fingerless gloves because um, here on your hands, I think it's on the middle fingers, it gets really calloused. And say like the first party or the first booking, you won't really notice much difference except maybe for the first time your hand might be a little bit, tiny bit sore or tender. Um, the next one, you really won't notice much more different, but by about the third party, you're at, your hand's starting to go a bit calloused. There's a spiritual lesson in there about your heart being hardened, but I'm not going to go into that right now, but do mention it in the comments if you would like me to expand upon that. So um, yeah, this is really important to stop my hands from hurt, from, you know, getting a bit sore. I mean, you don't have to wear it and maybe you're well hard and you don't need to, but I say, well, why not? Especially if you're a lady, it's quite, it's quite nice to have soft hands, isn't it? All right, so that's why I've got that there for more than one pump. I do regret it if I don't use it. Um, also, now, if you've got to go and you don't want to disappoint any boys or girls, uh, I do also recommend that you have a couple of things um, in your bag. So first I've got, well, this is just like a random uh, punch balloon. And so say like, uh, you've got a line of kids and you know, the last one there, you know you don't have time to make them a balloon. Give them a little gift. A kid will be quite excited to get one of these. Don't blow it up for them. You just give them a love to do new balloon, but I'm gonna give you this instead. Of course, they don't have to wait ages for that. Another thing you can give them is a chocolate coin. <gasps> Those guys will remember you and they will love you and they'll hopefully invite you to their birthdays too. And there is something else actually in this middle one and it's a nail file. Because uh, if you break a nail, um, even if you don't really have long nails, um, if you do break one and they're a bit jagged, it's really annoying and you don't want it to obviously pop balloons. I don't know if a nail has ever popped a balloon, but it was really got on my nerves. Um, so I always keep one of those there. Now, I've also got a separate little compartment here. It's a little mini zipped compartment. And in that I've got, well, you'll need business cards. Um, uh, so you, you will want to have those out. If you've got a table, have some out ready. But if not, you know, if anyone asks, you can whip those out. I also have some money. You might need a bit of change just in case you suddenly get in the car and drive off and you realize, oh no, I've left my purse at home and I've got no fuel in the car or you need some change for a client. So it's just, just a little bit of wisdom. I mean, it's probably obvious, isn't it? That's it. So, okay, so it's not like a busking bag or anything, but you know, if you're starting out, you don't need to spend loads of money on stuff. Just get yourself experience get yourself a good reputation and you'll get yourself bookings. I hope that's been really helpful to you. If you have any suggestions um, or any comments uh, that you think would help anybody else or me, <laughs> I'm always willing to learn, you can write them below and I want to thank you very much for joining me. Please join me um, on one of these other videos that's popping up right now.